All right, here we are today, day two of how to make a silkscreen project. So, we burned our silkscreen yesterday. We have our lovely design, class of 2023. So five years from now, when I'm still using the same video, you'll know exactly when I made this video. But we need to prep this screen so that we can actually do our printing um, onto it. Part of our problem right now is everywhere that is not blue, that does not have the emulsion, is going to allow ink through it. So it's great that the ink is going to come through where our design is. It's terrible that the ink will come through around the design. So we're going to tape off our design using some packing tape. Now, different teachers do it different ways. This is the way I do it. I like this way. It seems to work. So just go with me on this one. I'm going to grab some packing tape. We keep it on the end on some hooks. I tend to carry around a lot of X-Acto knives because I pick them up after you guys from all over the classroom. So you'll need an X-Acto knife and some packing tape. Really quickly here, the hardest part of this project is always finding the end of the packing tape. If someone is kind, they tend to leave you a nice little tab for you to rip off. But in this case, I found the end. Oh, I almost found the end. Hang on. Here we go. Here we go. On camera, finding the end of tape. Beautiful. It's kind to leave a little tab. But for today, we're going to tape this off. I like to start on one edge and then have overlapping strips so that I can kind of pull off one corner and then all the tape should come off as I go through this process. So, tape in here, give a little poke, the tape will rip. So, there we have our generally taped off design. I'm going to do a couple close to the design here. Sometimes there's some little pinholes and things that get into your um, design and you don't want to have any ink sliding through. So, now the back of our soak screen is completely taped off. We should be good to go. Again, make a little tab. Be kind. Hang this back up. Knife goes away so it's safe. Always, whenever cutting tape or anything around these soak screens, be very careful. If you poke through this, it's like $35 of waste because we have to replace the screen. We cannot uh, reuse them or really fix the holes. We've got a few that we've got duct tape on, but we like it if we can keep them as nice and neat as possible. So, the next step now is to move over to our printing area, and I'll show you that in the next clip. All right, so here we are at our printing area. Now, this is the printing area specifically for t shirts. You can do paper. I'm going to do a demo with paper, but if you're not intending to do a t-shirt, feel free to use one of our other side mounting areas where you don't have the extra arm for doing a t-shirt. It just helps everybody else be available when they want to do a t-shirt, but this is the best one, so I don't mind if you use it. So I've got my design here. We've taped it all off. It's ready to go. I need to mount it in here so that I can print it. Now, I like to mount it vertically like this as best as possible. 99% of the time I'm going to be mounting my design in the long pattern. If for some reason it got burned in a funny spot, you might have to do it horizontally, but generally you're going to mount it in the vertical format. I'm now going to set up and get it aligned to our alignment position. Now, the trick here with getting this uh, lined up and what we call registration or registered is that we want to make sure that we have a piece of paper underneath that will not move around. Um, some people like to use tape or marks on the board. Um, we find that after a little while the board starts to get a little uh, dirty, sticky, whatever you want to call it. And so having a physical piece of paper is just an easier way to align and make sure all your prints are registered and they all stay in the same location every time you're printing. So it takes a little bit of trial and error to get this piece of paper exactly where you would like it. I can see through my design before I put any ink onto the screen. No matter whether I'm using red, white, doesn't matter what color ink I'm using, I can see down much better before I put any ink on. So I can make sure my design is lined up with the piece of paper, everything looks good, I'm happy with where it's going to land. I would then take some spray adhesive and I'm going to hold up one edge of the paper, hold it back, give a little spray, a 
allow this to stick down, and then we are going to pick up the other side of the piece of paper, a little spray, and stick down. If you're printing your t-shirt, you're also going to want to mist the whole board platen area so that the fabric will stick and not lift when you're doing your actual print. For paper, we don't mind if it lifts off. It's, it's okay, not ideal, but it certainly works better than having to use a whole bunch of tape and peeling tape and all this kind of stuff. But just sticking this piece of paper down is super crucial. But you also have to remember, you put a second piece of paper down that you're actually going to print on because you don't want to print on the one that's your registration piece or it kind of defeats the purpose of registering your, your print. So to actually print, I'm going to need some ink. So I have some yellow ink. I happened to find a squeegee that was not fully cleaned. Someone was using yellow already. So I grabbed their yellow squeegee and I got my yellow ink. I have an ink knife here that I pulled off the shelf. I'm going to make sure that I put my lid onto a scrap piece of paper so it doesn't get the table dirty. I have my ink knife and I'm going to load up my screen with some ink. Now I know that my design is smaller than my ink knife so I can move in a vertical format. If I had a very wide design I might need to put my ink on one of the sides so I can pull my design left to right. It always works better in a front to back. That's the way that the screens were designed to go and it what we call standoff or the bounce in our screen so it actually doesn't touch until we push on it. When you're going left to right, the front edge of the design and the back edge touch at different points and it's a little tricky. Whereas if you go along and drag, that whole portion of the design touches at the same time, makes a much cleaner design. So, ink knife, I'm going to scoop out a generous amount of ink. Whatever you don't use from this specific color, because we're only using one color at a time, you can always put back in the can. So it's important to grab enough so you don't have to be going back to your jar too often. We're only printing a couple prints today, but I'm still going to use lots of ink to apply it to my screen, scrape the excess off. I'm going to take this dirty knife now, set it on the edge of the lid, put my can of ink, also if I can fit it onto the same piece of paper. Now everything's clean, the table's not getting dirty. I like to have some wiping rags close by so I can give my hands a wipe. The more mess you make, uh, whether it be touching the ink containers or your screen, the higher likelihood you're going to have weird fingerprints on your design when you do your actual print. So, do yourself a favor, try to keep your hands as clean as possible. For today, we will do this. If I was being particular, I'm making a t-shirt, I would definitely go wash my hands and start over. Or, an alternative option is to find a second person to work with you and they can be the clean hand person. You do your printing, doesn't matter how dirty you get, they're the ones moving the paper in and out, and that way everyone stays clean, and then you trade. So you help them be the clean hand person when it's them doing their project. So we've already loaded a spare sheet into the, underneath the screen here. These squeegees are what they're called. They have a nice fine edge. You wanna pull the ink across to fill the design with ink, and then you want to flip the squeegee over and scrape off all of the ink. You only want to have just the ink that goes through the pores of the screen be what goes through. So I like to, what's called flood my screen like this. I'm going to flood the ink through. I'm going to flip and then I'm going to push and scrape off. Now, if you're having trouble, obviously the two hand approach works good too, where you pull with two hands. Again, you flip, push, and scrape it all the way off. This is much easier of an approach than just like using all wrists and stuff. I really like the push technique, uh, especially if you're doing like 100 shirts. Your arms definitely get sore. So when I lift this up and pull gently off, my design comes off. I've got class of 2023, almost perfect on the first go. Because I did a couple passes, there is definitely some ghosting and some image transfer because the screen doesn't stay exactly in the right place. So, the last step of this project, if I was to touch it now, it is quite, quite wet. 
This ink, if I left it on the counter, would take weeks and weeks and weeks to dry. The ink is designed to be heat cured, so put onto t-shirts and actually cooked to be solid, like a rubbery kind of textile, same as you get at a t-shirt store, and that keeps it durable, keeps it long lasting. So we're gonna do another print here. I'll line back up to my alignment registration piece, bring my screen down, we're gonna pull our ink across, flood that screen, and then a nice push to scrape everything off. If you didn't quite get it all in the first go, scrape again. You want to get it all off so you're not leaving blobs of ink on the design. Give it a slight lift, peel off the design, and there we go. Last step of the process, put it into what we call our scamp dryer or our t-shirt burner, dryer, whatever you want to call it. It heats up the design. going to come through here. Be careful, it is hot, it is an oven, it will for sure have some warmth to it. So make sure that as you're bringing this out, that it is not, uh, you're not sticking your hands in here too far and burning yourself, okay? This design now is dry to the touch after the first go around, no issues. If you had a concern or it was a little too thick and you thought it seemed a little wet, it does not hurt to stick it in for a second time. So. That is how you print your t-shirt designs. That is how you print on paper or whatever material. I could put any material onto this and print the same design onto that. As long as I could heat cure the ink, you're good to go. The last step of this process is to take this screen. You're gonna to wanna to put a scrap piece of paper underneath here. You're gonna to wanna to take your ink knife now again Scrape off any unused, unneeded ink. Scrape off any extra off of your screen as best as possible. Get it scooped up. Put it back in the container. And then we move on to our cleaning. I've done a whole different video on how to clean the different screens, the different processes by how to do that, the way we do it at JP. And I hope you enjoy watching that one as well. But thanks for tuning in for this demo of how to make t-shirt screens.